Good morning everyone, welcome back. Welcome if you are new. As you can see, we are in a bit of a different kitchen this morning. Um, I'm very privileged to say we are in my mom's kitchen this morning. Um, I think I consider her as the, how can I say it, the sourdough bread queen. She learned me how to cook and to bake from a very small age. Uh, so this morning we are baking sourdough bread. Before we jump into the video, I just want to ask if you would be so kind and please subscribe to my channel, it helps my channel so much. So mom, you want to come and say, say hello? <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm pri privileged to have such a nice daughter. <laughs> But um, yeah, today we're going to bake sourdough bread. I remember long ago when I was a child, about four or five years old, I had a grandma who baked uh, sourdough bread. And my memory is a woman standing in a hot kitchen, uh, kneading and mixing and having dough under a cloth, all in the sunny patches. And it was just the most wonderful bread. But the main thing that I remember is the crust and I remember the sour profile, the sour aroma of this bread. So my mum, Chanel's grandma, they were also baking bread, but that was the generation where the woman starts working. So they were very busy and I believe they don't have time. And during that time, the instant hist uh, was introduced. And they baked this bread, it was nice and it was fresh, but it tastes like nothing. So since then, I've never tasted that sourdough bread. And I was looking for old people, I asked them and I tried to find out if there's anybody who could help me. Because it was on my bucket list to bake sourdough bread. So I was asking around, since I'm retired, all the old people, nobody could help me. Nobody knows anything. So, my dear child, find um, motherdough.co.za and they, they teach you to bake sourdough bread. I attended a course and it was absolutely wonderful. So, at the end of the course, they issued each of us a mother dough. Well, that's a starter and it looks like this. I've got it from the fridge this morning you have to put it on the top so that it can get at room temperature this is the heart of the sourdough this is the starter and this is called mother dough um, and this is the most fascinating thing i've ever worked with this is a collection of microorganisms that coexist in this mother dough and this is the culture of wild yeast spores and this wild yeast spores produces CO2 and that makes the bubbles and make the dough rise. The other element is the lactic acid and the lactic acid produces the aroma. Now um, at my age I never I'm one of five siblings so we were a family of seven and I never had a pet and now finally I have this pet. I have to keep this pet alive, I have to feed it, and not only that, I need to keep it strong. I need, a, I need to um, refresh it or feed it every second day. So how do you refresh it, or how often do you refresh it? If you only want to keep it alive, you can refresh it once a week, but then you cannot bake. Um, and you feed it with water, and flour and that's it so to keep it alive you refresh it every uh, once a week if you want to keep it strong you need to refresh it every second day and the other thing is if you want to bake bread you need to refresh it the previous night so let's have a look at how this whole baking process goes over three days. So say for instance, I have to bake, or I want to bake on a Friday, all right? That I need the bread on a Friday, I need to bake it and use it on a Friday. The day before is the main day, that's the day when you mix it. 
and then you need to be available for at least six hours you need to be there you need to be present you cannot go shopping you can invite a friend but you need to be there because you have to do something every half an hour but the night before that, that means on the Wednesday night, if I want to bake on a Friday, the previous day is the main day, that's the day of the baking. Then the night before, you need to refresh it, all right? Because you need a strong mother dough to rise the bread. So this whole process goes over three days. The main tools that you need is the following. Three electronic tools that's very important. The one is the um, Nutri Bullet. It's a blender, a very strong blender. And then I need a kitchen scale. And the other thing is the Kenwood um, mixer. This is my mixer. And this is a very nice tool. It's quite. Um, Robust. Yeah, it's a robust and a strong mixer. It, this is a Kenwood Chef Extra Large. So and okay. this thing can handle up to a kilogram of dough. For a bread, the bread that we're going to bake, a standard bread, is 700, 750 grams. So you will see how this thing jumps around with this 750 grams of dough. But I think it can handle up to... Of one kilogram so I suggest if you bake something like rusks where it's more than it's about 1.5 kilograms um, it can barely handle that I've shown you the tools that we need now the ingredients now the main ingredients of the bread is and for the starter the mother dough uh, we need bread flour, white bread flour and water. Please use your local products. This is Eureka Molds and stone ground is very important because if you use normal commercial flour, that commercial flour was produced in with heat and the heat kills off uh, lots of the nutrients. Please use local stone ground flour. Everything must be stone ground you have to use 500 grams of flour. Now that flour can be made of a combination of half of it uh, brown bread flour, half of it white bread flour. All right. Now if you want to get more um, adventurous, you can add some extra spelt. Now this spelt flour you can't get from your local stores. I'm ordering it from the mother dog company. But something that you that you can get <laughs> locally is raya. So the raya, the white bread and the white bread flour can be can be found in your local store. And then the other thing that we add when we baking bread is malt. Now you get two types of malt. You get a classic uh, baker's malt, white baker's malt and you get a dark baker's milk. Now, for this bread, we're only going to use the white classic one. Why do we add malt? We only add a small amount. It's, I think it's eight grams per bread, but it's like adding um, vanilla to, um, to a cake, to a cake mixture. So this is just for flavor. So we're going to start with the starter. Say for instance, we decide we want to bake on Friday. So we want to mix on Thursday, but to, to mix on Thursday or the middle day, I need to refresh my mother dough. It needs to be strong. And this is what we're going to do next. I forgot about the salt. I'm using a healthy salt. It's an Himalayan salt. And the other thing is, um, this is for the crust. We use extra virgin olive oil. Then there's something that we need. It doesn't go into the bread, but we need it for shaping and baking. And it's white rice flour. Now this flour is a dead flour. It doesn't react with anything. It doesn't react with water. It doesn't re react with the other flours. That's all the ingredients. So it's now, we want to bake tomorrow. Today we have to refresh the mother dough. So what we're going to do now, we want to bake on Friday, 
That means the day before the baking we have to do the mixing. That's the part that's going to take about five, six hours where you have to be available. But the night before you have to refresh your mother dough because you need a fresh mother dough to lift the dough. Okay, so now we're going to refresh the mother dough. And we're refreshing it so we can bake tomorrow. You can keep any amount of mother dough. It can be less. I think you shouldn't work with less than 100 grams because the Nutribullet can't mix uh, a small amount. It likes a lot. So I always try and keep at least for the mother dough 200 grams. Now the thing is if you're going to refresh it it's going to be doubled. That means if I use 200 grams of mother dough and I'm going to feed it with the same amount of flour and half the amount of water it's going to double up so if I've got two I start off with 200 grams of mother dough if I um, refresh it in the end it will be 400 and that's perfect and please remember don't use only your mother dough if you use it for the bread you need extra to save in your fridge um, your mother dough so this is 200 gram. What I did is I got it from the fridge. It has grown. It has multiplied. It has fed on the flour that I have refreshed it before. And this is what it looked like. So what's important is um, you weigh your mother dough. And then how you refresh it, you have to refresh it with exactly the same amount of flour, white bread flour, and then half the amount of water. So uh, this part Chanel can do. Something very important that I forgot. If you want to refresh or you want to start baking, you need distilled water. Now this distilled water, you can use cooked water. Just do it early enough so it can cool off to room temperature. If it's too hot, it's going to warm up the, the dough and the mother dough, and that's not good. And it shouldn't be cold that has just the opposite effect. It needs to be at room temperature. Okay, Chanel, what you can do first is you can measure this. Uh, we're going to use 200 grams of this. If it's a bit more, you just throw it away. Okay. 100 grams of water. Be careful. Must be exactly 100 grams. Mm -mm -mm. Just a drop. Now it says 100. So, the rule is... Uh, you have to, if you have a mother dough, weigh the mother dough and you have to refresh it with the same amount of flour and half the amount of water. So if you're going to use 200 grams of mother dough, um, the same amount of flour, so it's 200 grams of white bread flour and then half the amount, which is 100, 100 grams of water. So what I'm doing is I'm first uh, measuring my water and then I, I weigh this and I break it up into the water and then we're going to dissolve it or blend it and then you have to measure your um, white bread and then we're going to mix it. Just break a piece off so you can make sure mm, you have... It feels like clay. Okay. You have to be strong and you have to be... <laughs> yeah, just break it. Is it? Just break it. <laughs> it's fine. Weigh this big part, 199, just a small piece, just add it, 200. Uh, and then, just blend it quickly. Uh -huh. Great. Now the same amount of flour as the mother dough, it's 200 grams of mother dough. Yes. In here. And then the mother dough mixture on top. This is the only messy part of the whole process. And unfortunately, you have to do it every time you refresh. And I just want to tell you a story. This part Chanel will never do. She was a child and about four or five years <laughs> old and she attended an art class. And in this art class, that period, they were supposed to do mache 
um, models. And, or a much pot thing. But anyway, there was glue involved. And there was a big bucket of glue in the middle of the table with the children sitting around. And she told them they can now dig into the glue with their hands and smear it over the, the uh, newspapers. And Chanel sits there and she just froze. She sits like that. She couldn't put her fingers to get herself to get to dig into the to dig into the to the glue. Mm -hmm. All the other kids dig dig in, mm -hmm. and Chanel was just frozen. So this part she will never do. Yeah. So let me do this quickly. <laughs> this is just messy. Okay, do you see? Everything comes from this container. I'm not going to show you how I'm getting this out of here. I'll just show you the mixing part. Now this is the mixture of mother dough and water. And I have to mix it. This is a nice tool that I've ordered also from mother dough. Now you have to mix this mother dough and water into the flour. So mix with this tool most of the water and then you start off with your fingers. Half this mixture will go for the bread and the others will be the mother dough that I save. This is the messy part. You continue with your fingers. I can see why Chanel hates this. I hate it as well. But uh, if you have a pet that you need to keep alive, you have to do this. Just press the water through the flour. And if you've got a, a wet piece, just push it into the flour and in the end this will come to one big mass. After some kneading, it looks like this. All right, it's not well need, needed yet. What I do is I'm going to weigh it I need 200 grams in each container. I'm going to break off more or less 200 grams. And I have to do it with both of them. And now, because it's a smaller piece, you can mix it properly. You can feel it with your hands. Uh, sometimes, if you look at it, your eyes or your sight takes over. If you don't look at it, if you look outside the window, you can feel with your hands how you press the moist or the water through the dough. I think it's fine. Make it in a ball. You cut it with a knife on top. Don't go through just like this. And you open it up a bit, just a bit so that the air can come in. So there's your mother dough for the future. And now I need another 200 grams exactly the same. So this is my mother dough that I'm going to keep. And the other 200 grams is for the bread that we're going to bake the following morning. You leave it outside at room temperature for about half an hour. Put the lid on, but don't lock it, all right? There must always be some airflow. So I leave it on the counter for about half an hour. And then I put it in the fridge overnight and tomorrow morning we're going to use well obviously one of them the 200 grams to bake the bread now what's interesting is if you leave it on top how do you know that this thing is alive you will see after half an hour you get some condensation on the, at the, at the uh, underneath the top and that we call proof of life put it in the fridge and then you leave it overnight to proof and tomorrow morning we're going to use it Good morning, it's the following morning. Today we're going to mix so we can bake tomorrow. All right, sorry for the dresses, that's the same. We slept with these clothes. Um, okay, this is easy. The ingredients is 200 grams of mother dough, 300 grams of distilled water, and then 400 grams of flour. Now, with the water, um, I'm going to mix it with 30 grams of olive oil. We add the olive oil because uh, that helps with the crust. Now for the, for the flour, I need 400 grams of flour. What I do is I make it half half. So 200 grams of white wheat, uh, white bread flour, then make the other half 200 grams 
of brown bread. You can also, if you want to be adventurous, you can add some rye and you can add some spelt. First do the water, the 300 grams of water with 30 grams of olive oil. Three oh one. Okay. Yeah. Nobody will die from that. And then thirty grams of of olive oil. Oh, this is a new bottle. Something important, the mother dough in the morning, if, if you want to bake, take it out of the fridge so that it is at room temperature. Just put three quarter on there, big one on here, oh, okay. and just add 160, a big chunk of that. Yeah. Yep. Blend it. Yeah. Big chunks, big chunks. Hmm? No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. And now you have to measure 400 grams of flour. I just add the brown bread because it tastes nice. And now for the rest, uh, brown bread flour. For the flavoring, we're going to add some baker's malt, classic baker's malt. They call it a white malt. Only eight grams, that's all. I think you can do without the malt, but I have it. Eight grams is about this much. Just mix this a bit with just with a spoon. Okay. If you first pour in the flour okay, and then that on. on top, then you have problems to mix the bottom flour into the mixture. Throw in a third, just a dab, that's enough. And then the flour on top, and then the all of the flour. All of the flour on okay. top. And the rest of this mixture. Now you need to mix that. You need muscles for that. <laughs> Which I don't know. <laughs> don't do it like this. Um, it's not a cake. So I, <laughs> I handle it like this. Just make sure that all the flour is mixed in, that it's wet. Oh, there's a lot of flour at the bottom. So look at that. Just mix it in. Okay, I think it's fine. And now we're going to autolyze into the mixer for half an hour like this. It's got a dough hook and a k-hook. Now, you're supposed to use this dough hook. The problem is that if you start mixing, it doesn't collect the dough at the sides. All right, so I don't like this. I use the k-hook. So put it in. Just lower it. Put this thing on. Now this process is called autolyze. It's self-digestion. The whole fermentation process starts here. I have to leave it for half an hour to autolyze and then we're going to mix it for a few minutes and then we're done. This thing is now finished with the autolyzing. Now before I mix it, I have to measure uh, 10 grams of salt and then 25 grams of water. So this is a crucial step. This can make the difference between a complete disaster and yeah. So I take this off, I add the salt and then I have to add this water a teaspoon at a time and then I must wait until each spoon is completely absorbed before I continue. I set it on a three or three and a half, and then when everything is absorbed, I'm going to set it to five and a half. 
Okay, I'm adding the water five ml at a time. I know it's completely absorbed when it is uh, here at the bottom. You can have a look inside. The bottom is still this go at the bottom. Absorbed. The bottom is clear and now I'm going to mix it on very high, five and a half for exactly two minutes. <laughs> Thanks, freaking Evans. How's your mom? Use wet hands to do this. Okay. Put a few spoons full of olive oil in a bowl and then I transfer the dough to the bowl. I've got two tools here. Um, this is a dough cutter and this is a dough scraper. I use a dough scraper. Now I do a very important thing and they call it a stretch and fold. Now you will get many um, versions of a stretch and fold, but I'll show you what my stretch and fold is. This dough contains oil, so it won't stick to your fingers, Chanel. Okay, you take the bowl, oh, you take that piece of dough and you take it underneath, and now you're going to pull it up and you're going to stretch it. Now you are stretching the gluten bonds. Make sure that your thumb doesn't push through the dough because it will cut the gluten bonds. So just stretch it. Don't let it fall on the floor. Stretch it and then you just close it like a pie on the sides and I turn it a quarter around from, so from the one side I do the same thing. The gluten bonds will stretch, fold it double, close it, this is three times and you're going to do this for the next four hours every half an hour. You will see every time you do this, it will become stiffer and stiffer. I put a cap on top, it's called a proving cap. Now this is not just a piece of plastic, this material can breathe. So I put it on top. This must prove at room temperature. So now the interesting thing, um, you can put this in the oven. If you put it in the oven, with the door cracked and just with the oven light on, it resembles room temperature. So the oven is not switched on. I put it in the oven and I crack the door open with a wooden spoon. So after half an hour, I will take it out, I will stretch it. Yeah, every half an hour and then the last half an hour you just leave it. It's now half past one. So half past five, this process will be finished. And then I'm going to shape it and put it in the fridge until the following morning when you're going to bake. So, major uh, process is completed. This is the eighth uh, stretch and fold that we do. It's three and a half hours later now. Uh, this is the last one that we do after this stretch and fold. You leave it for 30 minutes and then we're going to shape it um, and leave it for a warm proving and then a cold proving overnight. Grab it underneath, shake it, you will see that the dough becomes tighter and tighter. Is it the fourth one? Yes. Okay. There you are. Okay. 
close it, leave it, and then um, in half an hour we will going to shape it. Okay, the dough has rested for 30 minutes, and now we're going to shape and put it in a banneton. I'm going to use this one to get more slices from a oval one. Okay, I use the rice flour to shape, not very much. And then, the reason why I use a transparent bowl, I can just do it like this, and then you can see the dough running. So you don't have to intervene, scrape it out, you just leave it like this. You, it takes a few minutes and it will clear the bowl. Now we do the shaping. And I use the dough cutter. It's a sharp thing. And now I'm doing this just to keep it so that it is mobile on the surface. If it sticks somewhere, just use some extra rice flour. I use the rice flour for the shaping. Okay. The next thing you do is to stretch this dough. Remember, you use your palms, but never press your finger through the dough. So just stretch it. Take it underneath and just stretch it. I need a large square. Okay, I think it's fine. Now you take the one side and you fold it to the middle. Alright, just press it a bit. Take the other side, stretch it, fold it to the middle. And then you take the sides, stretch it, fold it to the middle. And the other side as well. Stretch it, fold it to the middle. And then you fold it double with a fold at the bottom. All right. I think you'll need some extra rice flour. Now what you're trying to achieve is you roll it like this. When you roll it, um, so you stretch the surface. So you do this. You go underneath. So you stretch it on top because this will be the top of your bread. Just turn it around a few times while you do this, stretching the surface. I don't want any bubbles or anything on the surface. Everything is folding nicely. And you have to flower the banneton. Now I must get this thing in an oval shape so I can fit it in there. Do this, try and stretch it. Okay, I think it's fine. Now you have to tip it, but you can't do, redo this. If you do it twice, you will lose a lot of air. Okay, you just do this. And please place it in the middle of the banneton. I think that is absolutely fine, looking like this. Just take some extra rice flour and do this. And now we are absolutely done. Now this thing, Again, we're going to put it in the oven with the door cracked open and the light on. Leave it to desk proof or to warm proof for at least six hours. So it's in now for a warm proofing inside the oven with the light on. Six hours. And then tonight, just before you go to sleep, you take it and you put it in the, in the fridge for an overnight eight hours or ten hours it doesn't matter when you're going when you want to bake tomorrow if it's in the morning or in the afternoon don't leave it until tomorrow night because it will overproof so you can have a look just peek before you put it in the in the fridge tonight before you go to sleep and you will see how this thing has risen and that is the slow fermentation the warm proving and then the cold proving overnight and that causes the slow fermentation. The longer it proves, the more sour is the profile. That's it. And tomorrow we will bake. It's the following day, it's the baking day. You can bake any time today. Don't bake that third day in the evening. It's too long. You will overproof. I don't take the dough out of the fridge yet. 
I said this because this thing have to preheat for 45 minutes on your highest temperature. Mine maximum temperature is 250 and it must heat for 45 minutes. 45 minutes, it will preheat for almost 15 minutes and then that for 45 minutes, it will take an hour before this oven is ready. A half an hour before you actually start baking, you have to take the dough out of the fridge. We're not going to do that now. I now have to re it wasn't 250 heated to maximum for 45 minutes. Now I'm setting it to 200 degrees and now for 55 minutes. Half an hour before we physically bake, after the, um, the heating up of the oven, I take this out of the freezer so that it can come to room temperature. Look at this thing that was coming from a cold proving in the, in the fridge. Now we're going to score it. In order to do that, we use a scoop and we put the... Um, Baking paper, please make sure it's not wax paper because that will melt into your bread. Put it on top of the bread, put the ladle there and quickly pop it over. And then it comes loose. And now I want to shape it. Rice flour. There's two scoring tools. This one is a professional one. I can't use it. I like to use a blade. Then I can control the depth of the scoring. So now you can score it as you like. I'm going to score it like this. And you have to score it five millimeters deep. transfer it to the oven remember we bake just at the bottom of the oven slide it in easily now an important thing is you have to keep the oven moist for 20 minutes so I spray it with water one two three four five one two three four five on the sides and I close the oven now it, it must be um, sprayed every five minutes for the next 20 minutes and we will track it as it rises. After five minutes, This is the last spray. Time is up. So for the next five minutes, just let the steam out. Crack the oven with a spoon. Okay guys, so that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. 
and I'll definitely see you next Sunday for a picnic video for episode 2. Have a lovely Sunday. Bye. Bye.